<laughs> oh, disappointed. <laughs> we are disappoint. Wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be. You know, it's it's been rare that I've seen a movie that's actively trying to talk you out of going to see it. First of all, the word disappointment's in the title. And uh, we were the, also the only ones in there. And the marquee above the thing, they uh, when it gets past so many letters, uh, it the whole title usually isn't on the thing, and that was the case here too. So what we were left with was a big sign above the door that said, Disappoint me. Well, I can't fault them. Actually, disappointment's not even an accurate word. I, it wasn't like I thought this was going to be good going into it. We got exactly what was paid for. We did. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even think this movie's even going to be here tomorrow. This has been out for a couple weeks now. I was surprised it was still here today. <laughs> yeah, usually they give. Usually, no matter how much something bombs, um. It's usually around for two weeks. Unless it's like Punisher War Zone, which got like <laughs> that weekend and then was gone. Well, the one I can think of recently that was just here a week and gone was Meet the Blacks. <laughs> uh, that was like a week and gone. Like, fuck, like, everything... Morgan was around longer than that, and that debuted at number 17 on the, on the box office. Jesus, I didn't realize that one came out so fucking low. I, I, that kind of surprised me, too, honestly, because it wasn't dead when Sarah and I went to go see it. There was a decent enough crowd in there. Apparently, that crowd we had for Morgan is all who went the to go see crowd. it. <laughs> Apparently. That's why it's hard to gauge shit like that sometimes in Springfield, but we had the whole theater to ourselves for the disappointments room. <laughs> Which, I, sometimes seeing a movie with a with a packed house, or at least uh -huh. a moderately packed house, can really help with, with the viewing experience. I mean, it feels cliche to say it, but yeah, like some, no, of, like, it can. some of the black movies that we've seen, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, it helped. Like, it honestly, like, it, it heightened the experience. Mm -hmm. Um... This one, I enjoyed the fact that we were the only ones there, so that we could just talk freely the whole fucking movie. Yeah, <laughs> e exactly. Uh, because if this had a crowd in there, they wouldn't have been jumping at jack shit. We would have been in a crowd full of people who honestly, 30 minutes in, might have fallen asleep, and then we could have just talked through it anyway. Because, yeah, that... That would have been a very hard movie to watch and not, like, like I mean, basically we, we had, like, a full conversation the entire film. Mm -hmm. That would have been a really hard one to just sit there and not say anything oh, the whole God. fucking time. And, and that's the thing, is like, it's only an hour and a half. Like, it, it clocks in, know, like... it says it's 4.16. This movie was actually about... <laughs> <laughs> it was actually oh, about no. nine hours long. <laughs> that scene where she's locked in the room for fucking ten hours happened wow. in real time to oh, us. Oh, shit. This movie's <laughs> actually really good. It altered time. What am I talking about? This, this, this isn't a disappointment. It's a surprise. <laughs> It, in terms of <laughs> surprise, it's like Showa. It's eight hours long. <laughs> and just as uplifting. Shit. Don't you have to be at work in a couple of hours? <laughs> so, sorry, I'm late for work. It turned out I was at this nine-hour Holocaust movie. I mean, who knew? You can't get mad at me. <laughs> this was important. <laughs> I knew that there are so many Nazis you could just find and duck to. <laughs> right? Where else do you think I bought my copy of the Night Porter? <laughs> um, the, of the dumb horror movies like this, this movie's really bad. It's <laughs> not as it's. I had to get that that one movie that. I had to see earlier in the year, uh, The Other Side of the Door. Oh, right, right, right. You could easily compare these two movies. That one was way... Because they both had doors. They, they did both have doors. Yeah, and they're both <laughs> the same... 
they're both really the same kind of horror movie, honestly. That one was far worse than this. This, the difference being, this movie you could tell was made by competent people, and they just kind of fucked it up. Other Side of the Door was jaw-droppingly stupid. Now, this movie sucks, too, but at least this one, if I could pay it any sort of compliment, it's like, this is a fairly decent director on a bad day, you know? Other Side of the Door was fucking shit. <laughs> Which honestly may have made that movie funnier than this one, but objectively, this was the better of the two. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think that one might actually even be on Netflix now. Oh, if you watch, if you and Letty watch that, you'll laugh your asses off at it. <laughs> Sweet. It's ridiculous. It's, whatever you do, don't open the door. Okay, opens the door, and then ghost cannibals are after them. Fuck. Because that makes sense. Oh, God. It, 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 <laughs> that movie made no sense. That movie began with the fake-out dream sequence. And then when she wakes... This wake whole movie was the fake-out yes, dream sequence. Yes, this movie has, like, at the least, has, like, three of the fake-out dream sequences in it. Other Side of the Door had a lot, too. Other Side of the Door opened with it, and then the next scene when she wakes up, it said four years later or something like that. <laughs> so what the fucking thing really happen? Ugh. Four years after she fell asleep. Yeah. Um. Well, that's like this one, like... For some movies, I might put that as like, like a testament to the filmmaking, but mm -hmm. this one I'm not going to. That... With, like, the fake-outs and the dreams and the hallucinations and the flashbacks and everything constantly going back and forth between what's really happening and what's not. Like, it reached a point partway, well, we're getting into, like, the third act, where I honestly could not tell anymore if anything that was happening on screen was actually even fucking happening. The only reason where I, why I thought, okay, the, the movie, you've all seen this kind of movie before many times, it's Kate Beckinsale, her husband, her kid, go to a creepy house in the middle of nowhere, House is fucking haunted because there's an upstairs room Maybe. called the Disappointments Room where... I'm still not sure that there was a single ghost. The only reason why I think there is is because that ghost pops up in instances where she wasn't looking at it or she wouldn't have known it was there. And the ghost did, like, hang that kid at one point. But she went back out there and he wasn't there. She did? Yeah. Maybe I checked out at that point. Yeah, she went back out there and couldn't find him, and then she, there was, like, a brief, like, two-second snippet of showing him, like, digging up that coffin again, and then it cut to, like, the reverse shot of it, and it was her just looking out the window oh. at him. Oh, So she just imagined all that. Okay. But apparently she didn't tell herself she imagined it, mm -hmm. so she was surprised when she found out that she had imagined it. But she was also... <laughs> see, yeah. well, that's, what I, that's what I was saying. Like, like, there reaches a point where it is impossible to tell, because, yeah, there's things happening to other characters in other places, and you're like, is she dreaming this too, or well, is this actually happening? She and also it's impossible sees... to tell, because she is such an untrustworthy narrator. It's, it, it's like... It's like stuff like like uh, like Sucker Punch, where you don't really fucking know what is happening because you're not really sure if like like what you're seeing is happening or what you think you're seeing is happening or well, it's like which level of her being in here is real. The only thing that makes me think like yeah, there is probably go actually ghosts in here is that she sees them before she even knows who they are or what they are. Like, when she goes to that library to find out the backstory on the ghosts and things. Like, not saying, like, everything but, in this movie is, is real, but... But, yeah, but, that, but that's even with that, is, like, the woman there, like, she greets her as, oh, yeah, I'm the lady who sent you all the pictures of the family that used to live in that house. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's that. But I mean, there are but, other yeah, there are other scenes where the ghosts are just in the background when she's not looking at it and would have no yeah, idea and, they're and, even and, there. And, and that's what makes it really confusing to figure out, like, if there's even actually ghosts or if she's just fucking crazy. I think it's or, a little bit of both. <laughs> well, I mean, it's definitely that she's fucking crazy. But yeah, because like entire scenes, like like the whole like. Like, cause that kid out there digging up that grave and then getting attacked by like, like 
the stern old man ghost. There was no one out there, but then, like, it shows that scene of her, like, well, I did actually see that happen. So it makes you think, like, like, so was she hallucinating all the other stuff, too, since that clearly didn't happen? But then it's like, why would she hallucinate things that she wasn't seeing? Like, like yeah, like, when, when like, the ghost is standing behind her and she doesn't yeah. see it. Mm. Like, I just there's, so, there's so fucking little that makes any goddamn sense with this. If I were to try to guess what maybe went wrong with this movie. Um, first of all, how do you fuck up your house is haunted by crazy Gerald McGraney? How do you fuck that movie up? <laughs> that sounds like it should be terrifying. And it's not. Like, I've that... He, to this day, he can still make me shit my pants whenever I think back to him on Deadwood. Like, your house is fucking haunted by Gerald McRaney. That sounds like it should be an instant fucking success. Like, you're trapped in a house with Stephen Lang kind of success. And <laughs> Like, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. He's here, you're here, you're fucked, mm -hmm. clearly. <laughs> Unless he's on your side. He's I, not. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is... It's written... It's co-written by Wentworth Miller, and he also wrote a movie called Stoker, uh, which is actually a pretty good movie. And there are parts where I can kind of tell a little bit that it that it came from him. It, maybe this always started out as a crap script, but to give them the benefit of a doubt, this seems like maybe they wrote it at first to be like kind of like Stoker, where it's kind of surreal, there's quirky stuff that's happening. It's almost soap opera-ish in a way, the way the characters are all interacting with each other. Yeah, because a lot of the dialogue, especially between uh, Kate Beckinsale and her husband mm -hmm. in this, is so weird. It, like, like half the time it sounds like like it's just two different conversations that are just like spliced together so that it sounds like they're yeah. having a back and forth. What was that opening scene where oh, it was yeah, yeah cuz like, like they were saying like uh like they were listening to like the Mikado or something on their, yeah. on their as you car do. right. Yeah, you know like you do. Uh-huh. And her husband is like it's like oh no, it's like we're listening to Gilbert and Sullivan. Like what's more American than that? And she's just like they were English. It's like, well, you know, it's like, but you know that. It's like, I know that. It's like... <laughs> he goes, do you want me to turn it off? She goes, not on your life. Cut to title screen. <laughs> it's like, what? Okay. <laughs> and it's, not like there's, a... it's not like there's some overarching, like, Gilbert and Sullivan theme throughout it, or, like, their music comes back. Like, no. no. It, it does that's just it like that's that's the cold open is them having an awkward conversation about musical theater cut to the title that and also that's pointing out to like In the movie boy was, you can tell these they're really working through their accents to the two the guy especially Kate Beckinsale more, more often than not's fine yeah but. the guy like I couldn't tell where the fuck his accent was. I think as soon as he started talking, I was like, "Dude, you're not American." Oh <laughs> like, yeah, there, there was zero <laughs> chance of that. But yeah, he, he's got some kind of accent. It's not clear at first. Like, it almost sounds kind of like French. But then, like halfway through the movie, he almost sounded like he was trying to do like a Boston accent. Sometimes he looks like Frank Grillo, like because he's sometimes he's really disheveled and just the five o'clock shadow, like he's just about to throw some guns in his trunk and go hunt down drunk drivers in the purge. <laughs> Other parts, he looks like Louis Skolnick, <laughs> all depending on whether he's wearing his glasses or not. And so that, yeah, the. That opening was really awkward with a giant title coming on screen. It would be like if you recut The Shining awkwardly and the opening scene was Jack, Wendy, and Danny in the car and Jack's like, it's okay, honey. He saw it on the television. Shining. Ooh, the Shining. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> well, and that, that scene even starts, like the opening scene starts with a hard cut into it. So it's like, that just felt awkward. Like, it literally, as soon as the movie started, it mm -hmm. felt like something was wrong already. But no, and, and, and it, it is good that you make the the 
the reference there to The Shining because huh. the movie proceeds to do that itself See, here, for the rest of the movie. Yeah, here's my other thing about like when I was mentioning earlier about like maybe at some point this was a shining way, remake? No, yeah, no, no. I believe it. I mean more so like uh maybe it was something tonally that might have been a little more like Stoker where it was just Maybe it was a maybe at one point it started out like a little more moody, maybe a little quirkier, maybe a little weirder, and then somewhere along the line, they told them to add as many horror cliches as you can into this script, even if it makes no sense, even if you really don't have a three act structure in this movie. Because <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did. It, it, I could easily see where where they may have had like a reasonable script, and they're like, "Well, I mean, you don't have a whole lot of writing credits behind your name, so we're just gonna pass this around to like twenty other people <laughs> who will be uncredited to put all kinds of fucking notes in here." And I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because I liked his last movie, and I don't, I don't know, maybe this was always shit, but like, so, but no, you're right about it. But adding it, it, different cliche after cliche, it whether it's the fake out dream sequence or the little girl from The Shining is in this movie. Uh, if if there had been a scene where that kid stepped out and he was wearing like a fucking like Apollo like eleven mm -hmm. fucking sweater, I would have thought, okay, they just they're embracing it now. Yeah, because this kid has like the Danny Torrance like Prince Valiant haircut. Yeah. Uh, like he's in scenes like he's just like playing ball with himself sitting in like a hallway uh there's basically like the shot where like he rounds the corner and like a girl like basically instead of the twins it's just a girl and it's a yellow dress instead of blue dresses mm -hmm. same fucking shot of just standing there having an intense stare battle with each other mm -hmm. uh Oh, just not fucking all over the place with with like little subtle references. Oh, sometimes not so subtle. I got to give the movie credit in this one regard on the balls this movie has to rip off Poltergeist in a scene and then proceed to <laughs> and then, name drop and Poltergeist. Then name drops it with a character who was trying her hardest. It's another scene you've seen in 50 other things where Kate Beckinsale goes to the library. There just happens to be an old person there who knows exactly what's going on in her house, knows exactly what the ghosts are. 20 and years ago would have been Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah. Oh, she literally... She's trying her absolute level best mm -hmm. to do that. The old, yeah, she's got to be there to, to title drop, too, because she says, What you have in your house is what we call a disappointments room. A disappointments room? What's that? This is movie I'm sitting through. Which, it's, uh, it, it, okay, maybe this is just my thing. Apparently, like you were, you were telling me that somebody was, like, sending me some stuff that, that like, apparently. That, that is a thing. That, that's a thing that they did. Cool. That's probably where the idea came from. Fine with that. As a layperson, I have no prior experience with that term. Uh -huh. I would not know that unless I looked it up myself and just... Well, you weren't yeah. a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to go hide in the closet. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it seems like the sort of thing that... You know, like it, that seems like the sort of thing that would have come up at some point for someone who has a master's degree in architecture. That uh -oh. may have come up in a course or something somewhere. Mm. They're like, oh, here's a weird little thing. Like, you know, like, like 17th century architectural thing. They yeah. would build disappointment rooms. Kate Beckinsale's an architect in it. Like, that seems like the sort of thing that would come up, you mm -hmm. know? It's, I don't know, it's... it. it I mean, maybe not. I mean, who fucking knows? But it'd be like... I don't know. I can, I can tell you that the concept like it, of disappointments room in this, which is basically, like, it's an old-timey term. Because there's entire when, books on it. Like, the woman just has one. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, here, hold on. Um, Here it is on top of this pile here. Here's a book on disappointments room. It, it's like whenever, like... Okay, uh, remember the opening scene from Batman Returns? 
What if <laughs> what if Cobblepot's parents didn't throw him into the ravine? What if they just kept him in a closet for his life? That's what it is. It's like it's basically the sort of thing that like like in the boy, that's basically what they're like, "Oh, our kid's a total fuck up. We'll just build a disappointments room to keep him in in the mm-hmm. walls." It's basically the same concept. But like, I don't know, it seems like the sort of thing like this woman as an architect would have known about. And uh, but Honestly, what did any of that have to do with this movie? Like that oh, oh, that's fuck, fucking nothing. Like they they built that up like it was some like interesting twist. It's not. It's mentioned only a couple a few times a few times. I I don't know how that suddenly but, makes Gerald McRaney's character a mass murderer. But it, like well, he's killing everything that moves in this house. Well, and and that's that's a thing though that that for me goes along with the idea of I don't know, I don't know when the movie was being serious and when it wasn't with what mm-hmm. was actually happening. Because there's that point right before, like whenever they're inviting friends over for that one scene, so there's more than three people in the credits. Um, <laughs> like he's on his way, like in the kitchen, like making dinner and stuff, and then it cuts to like the kid, and the kid's like doing kid shit, and then it cuts to. Kate Beckinsale, and she's, like, drinking out of, like, her secret, like, booze drawer. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to the librarian back at, like, the town archives or whatever, looking through a scrapbook of all these grisly murders that have happened on that property. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, like, making, like, oh, no, I've got to call them face. Like, it's a fucking scrapbook. Like, you... You put it together. Mm-hmm. Like, this shouldn't be, like... Yeah. Like, it wasn't like... It was, like... It, it wasn't like she was looking through, like... Like, oh, here's, like, the newspaper from this date. And, like, wait, hold on. This other drawer. Here's this newspaper from this date. Like, no. It, they were all cut and pasted onto, like, a fucking scrapbook. It's and like, she like, tries this room to call... Ba- barely has anything to do with... <laughs> yeah. But, like, she tries calling to, like, warn them. It rings through. No one answers. And... It it it, like, it kind of makes it look like Kate Beckinsale is ignoring the phone ring, but there's also three other people who are are not in the middle of a horror film mm-hmm. in the kitchen who should have just answered the goddamn ringing phone. Because mm-hmm. then the woman's like she's calling, she's like making like oh, I got uh, uh, all these murders, all these massacres. Uh, uh, and, well, just now noticing this, and then like it doesn't like no one picks up. She's just uh, hmm. Hangs up the phone, and then just goes back to staring blankly at at the like desk in front of her. Oh. And then that's the last time she's in the movie. She never comes back after that. So it's like, like was she, was was she ever like, what did that scene happen? I'm sure, because I mean, this is this isn't the first. This wouldn't be the first like plot point that this movie totally dropped. I mean, this movie. Well, yeah, but, but it just makes me think of it because like all the other people were in the kitchen and no one was answering the phone. Mm-hmm. So like, did just no one? Was it just not ringing? And she was thinking about like, oh man, wouldn't that be crazy if that had happened? <sighs> it, it, it's I, it, it's impossible to tell. I, I I think the woman was I, I'm sure the woman was real. Well, I'm sure the like, woman was real, but I mean, like her trying to call, like like I've oh. got to warn them about all these murders I just discovered, even though I've already been sending them all kinds of like historical information that goes back farther than these newspaper mm-hmm. clippings. I I think it was probably just there to to help out the audience a little bit because this is a movie <laughs> that has this is a movie that has flashbacks to things that happened literally two minutes prior. Yeah, that one flashback was a flashback to the scene that preceded it. <laughs> Sometimes I couldn't even tell if we were in a flashback or not. There's one part where it does flashback to Kate Beckinsale about to cut her wrists, and then it shows her husband in New York City uh, talking to a therapist. I'm assuming that's happening right after he finds his wife, who's about to slit her wrist, but then he references that they're living in this big house now. And I was serious. Yeah. I leaned over to you like, I thought we were in the flashback. I'm like, well, and, and that's why <laughs> like, it, time is a fluid structure in this movie because they're constantly like, it's impossible to tell what day anything is happening on it. Uh-huh. This whole movie could have taken place in four days or 
five months. I have no idea. Every because, like, it'll... Cause, uh, like every scene, she's always wearing like some kind of a white T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Basically, like it might have like a pattern to it or a texture to it, or like, like maybe it's like a baseball tee and has like different colored sleeves. But basically, a white shirt and then some shade of gray cardigan. So you could interchange the scenes. But yeah, I mean, it, it's very easily you know interchangeable with scenes. Like, mm -hmm. to, like she's almost always dressed the same. Mm -hmm. Uh. And it makes it really hard because, like, in, like, you'll have scenes where, like, she'll be talking to a character, uh, wearing like, like that, like that, that one character or the one, uh, that one shot was like the the most confusing, because she was like out on like this little balcony talking to like the repair man, and she was wearing like a white shirt that was sleeveless, mm -hmm. and then she gets up and walks to camera. And then it cuts to her walking into the bathroom and walking up to the medicine cabinet to look inside it. And then suddenly, like, her husband's standing behind her. Mm hmm But she is wearing a completely different shirt. Like, it's like a long sleeve, like, sheer, like, t-shirt. So it's like, it's like, wait, did she, did she come in here and change? Is this a different day? Is this the same day, but later that same day? Is the other guy still out on the balcony? Like, how much time has passed between... Because, like, when you have a person walking to frame and then walking, you know, mm -hmm. in, it's like, it makes it look like these two scenes are supposed to go together. She often looks like when, like, a celebrity visits a small town, because this is taking place in a small town, <laughs> and she's walking through the street, like, with this cardigan wrapped around her, like, these big sunglasses, her hair looking perfect, and she, she looks like Kate Beckinsale's car broke down in the middle of a small town in New York. She Yeah, she, she looks like one of those scenes where it's like, it's like... Where'd you say you're from, lady? New York. Well, you're going to be holed up here for a couple days. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's fucking like Doc Hollywood. Like, I don't, my fucking car broke down. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a week before we can get that part in. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she's married to this guy in this movie who looks like he's still gotten over last year's purge. <laughs> God. When we started, I leaned over, I'm like, it's like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, like he looks familiar. Like, he's like... Ray finds other less, like less talented brother. Joey finds. <laughs> so, like this movie, though, like you were talking about the phone earlier. Like this is a movie that hangs up on itself. This is like this isn't three acts. It's about two point five <laughs> because it once it gets into what could conceivably be the third act. Yeah, there's some stuff going around in the house for, like, five minutes. Like, she thinks that Gerald McRaney ghost is about to kill the kid, and then she goes and gets the R rating by bashing Gerald McRaney's head in with a hammer for, like, three minutes. Like, she's goddamn Gallagher with that thing. This movie's rated R for, like, that scene, and they say fuck, like, four times, and there's smoking in it. Like, really, you kind of... You wasted an R rating on this PG-13 horror film. Yeah. And so then, like... They're two, like two minutes in the fucking editing mm -hmm. booth, and this is a PG-13. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then... Okay, so then the the ghost Gerald McRaney's not there, and the dad is comforting the kid, and the mom's like, things are so fucked up, blah, blah, blah. And then they leave, and the movie ends. <laughs> they just pack their shit in the car, like, yeah, all right, maybe this house isn't the best. Okay, drive off. Gerald McRaney ghost is looking at him through the window. The fucking end. There's your movie. <laughs> it'd be like if it'd be like if in a uh, in Insidious, whenever like partway through the like like going into like the beginning of like the second act when yeah like, it's like fuck all right let's just move mm -hmm. and then you just cut to the credits and then <laughs> insidious title across the screen it's huh. so insidious anticlimactic <laughs> the fuck yeah that's what happens here like really the the climax of the movie is <laughs> like the honestly the only good scene in this movie when Kate Beckinsale has her like drunken monologue she's got like this one fucking uh, it's like a 10 minute long scene yeah where she 
crushes this film. Yeah, I, I, she was really good in that. I, I have to, I have to assume that whenever they're like, okay, we need, like, we need like, like someone in this role, like a known person. We need mm. somebody in this role. I feel like they sent her that, like that script. Uh-huh. Like they're just like, okay, here's this scene. Like. Your fucking kid is dead. Mm-hmm. It's the one year anniversary, and you are drunk. <laughs> Action! You just don't bash his skull like Calvin Candy, <laughs> right? <laughs> and Django. Yeah, that, this was her version of that scene. <laughs> she freaking knocks this scene out of the park, and that scene is part of why I was mentioning earlier like there are moments in this movie where I can tell this is the same like, that dude was, who wrote like that was the day that like a, like everyone on set was awake yeah it's like, it's, it's well shot thing. it's well acted well, and, and that's it, it thing, is kind of tense a little bit in that it, scene and that's one of the things throughout the entire film that's so annoying with this movie is that it is very, very well shot. <laughs> no, it is. It's a really good looking movie. There's just the acting and the writing is fucking terrible. The horror aspect is bullshit. Like when I look at the her like drunken monologue, that's one scene where I'm like, was this movie at one point in the script way more like this scene? Because I could kind of see that, because, judging from yeah, like from Wentworth Miller's last movie. Because if if it's yeah, because it's, it's like so many people. It, it feels like like when you have like too many cooks in the kitchen, and you just everybody is trying to add something. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, if if this had just been like if the whole movie had been like that scene, yeah, and it was just this really really like like highly wound like like really taut like family drama like mm-hmm. that, it could have worked. It, it absolutely could have worked. Like this family moving to the country, and then this the 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 wife, the mother, just yeah completely collapsing and just dying a little bit more inside every yeah. day. That could have made a really compelling film. Yeah. Instead, or if, it, it, if they it, had stuck to just like, or she's crazy. Yeah. And went with that or lose the, lose the, she's crazy and just go with, no, no, it's fucking ghosts. Mm-hmm. Cool. Pick w- one of these things, but don't just put them all together. Cause that's like, <laughs> no, that's like with, with the boy. I was, I mean, it wasn't like a, a fantastic film, no. but I was with it as a ghost story mm-hmm. up until the point that they're like, oh, no, no, it's just a hidden mongoloid in the walls. It's like, <laughs> oh. And then bad Ronald happens. Yeah, it's like, like up until that point, you were doing okay. It wasn't ever going to be like an award-winning film or one I'm going to like, oh, man, as soon as that hits fucking Blu-ray, man, I'm uh, getting that shit. Yeah. But it, it had it, it had at least something. It was it was doing what it was supposed to do. And then yeah, like oh. yeah. it just it completely like it's like it's like and we'll throw in the twist. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like no, like haven't we learned from all of like M Night Shyamalan's mistakes that sometimes <laughs> you don't want to do that. Sometimes you don't need a fucking mm-hmm. twist. Sometimes you just need the movie to be exactly what it was supposed to be because. Like some of the stuff, like like there towards the end, like really ramping things up with suddenly, like like her going in there, like the very end, like like witnessing whatever she assumes happened or maybe did, and maybe there are ghosts. Fuck, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, in that room, and then like getting attacked by that dog, and then like having to kill a ghost with a ghost hammer. Like that's a phrase I said. That uh, happens. <laughs> oh, what else are you gonna use to kill a ghost? Yeah. A real hammer. <laughs> Oh, go right through it. <coughs> Fuck that. But it's like how you can only cut diamonds with other diamonds, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, this movie. So- but but that that scene. Like, sorry to, to, to interrupt. Like that, that scene. Like it's just it's it feels honestly, even though it's been leading to that, to suddenly escalate that highly mm-hmm. out of nowhere felt out of place. But it was also so short. Yeah. That it felt 
pointless to even do it like that. Like because it didn't feel like a whole act. It didn't feel like that. The drunken party monologue is longer than yeah than the actual haunting yeah. aspect of the final act. Mm -hmm. Like it and honestly, like like using since they wanted to name drop it, Poltergeist as a as a yeah. guide point, it would be like if you were watching Poltergeist and then as soon as it hit the scene where it's like. Like, the paranormal team's like, I don't know, we gotta check out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, all the crazy shit with, like, the, the long hallway and all the shit like that. If that was, like, basically, like, as soon as it's like, like, oh, man, this seems fucked up. And then they just got outside and went and got in the car and left. And then it cut to them at, like, the fucking hotel, like, setting the TV <laughs> Putting the TV out because like, it's showing the disappointments room. <laughs> like, if they skipped all of the actual point and they were just mm -hmm. like, it's like, oh, man, shit's getting crazy. Like, no, we're just going to go. Yeah. We're just going to go. Because that's, cause the movie is well made, like you said. And what... What does make it suffer is all the horror bullshit they throw in this, because it is shit like a fake-out dream sequence, the usual haunting stuff you see in all of this, only it seems I was waiting for wildly that, unnecessary. I was waiting for that kid to open a door and just, yeah. like, blood come pouring out of it or and something. None of it works because it's it's not scary. It's not compelling. It's not suspenseful at all. The only moment of relative tension was the drunken scene which didn't involve ghosts at all that was yeah, just all in just the dialogue a, and the acting yeah just a woman acting the fuck out of a scene yeah with a big ass knife in her hand that's what makes me think maybe this was once a more human story a more human script and they just interjected all this well what's common cliches we see in about 20 different horror movies nowadays let's put every single one of them in this movie and let's not make it scary at all let's just do the cliches and that's it <laughs> and it's not it's not scary like it's not is jaw-droppingly stupid as other side of the door partly because like look they they haven't they they have an experienced director behind this he's made some bad movies but he's made some good movies too and there are good looking shots like he he knows how to film the spiral staircase he knows how to get the exteriors he he can film shit with mirrors really well and stuff like that it's 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 not a bad looking movie at all it's just it just lies there dead like it's a good yeah. it's a good photograph of bullshit you've seen about 20 times and and the, there's scenes that just because of like if 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 this stuck to the weight that it tries to to pull when when it's doing like when it's her big drunken monologue mm -hmm. certain aspects would have worked better like like a theme throughout the whole movie is they keep alluding to the fact that they had another kid that died Oh, I forgot about... Oh, when it explains that? Yeah. Holy shit. And they keep, like... They keep alluding to they had a kid and it died. But I it leaned never... over to you and I was like, have they said how the kid died yet? It, it, it's, it's like a last minute reveal. Like, it's almost the last thing that happens in this movie before they leave the house. And Kate Beckinsale accidentally fell asleep and rolled over on the kid. Yeah, they... Oh my they, god, they keep, that's the reveal. They keep alluding to something really bad happened and, like, she's really fucked up from it. But, like, the way they keep framing it in, like, these flashbacks is, like, well, maybe she had, like, postpartum and, like, wasn't taking care of the kid. And then, like, at a point, like, Kate Beckinsale breaks down and just starts mentioning how, like, it's like... Like she was there. It's like even she didn't want to be near me. Like even she hated me. So she just stopped being alive. Because you rolled over and, on like, her and you fell like, asleep. Oh, so maybe it was like sudden infant death or mm -hmm. something. And then it actually shows the flashback finally, and like it shows her like walking around the house like with the kid, and the kid just won't stop crying and won't stop crying. She looks so fucking annoyed by that, and then like lays it down in bed, and then like she's laying there looking at the kid like God, why won't you stop crying? And then she falls asleep. And just crushes the baby. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a reveal. Oh, no, <laughs> God. Uh, it's like, especially because like, like I know babies are pretty delicate, but what's Kate Beckinsale weigh? Like ninety five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure a baby could support her weight. <laughs> like one way to find out: get that woman a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go real quick. Uh, I do got to mention some of the product placement in this film. 
Um, <laughs> not, yeah, there's not that there was there's not a, a lot. There's not a but, tremendous. Yeah, amount. it's not like Man of Steel levels or. But the, it's it's the quality over the the quantity. All right, there's a part where they're like it, it's. The small town of like 50 and so there's just like it's this a smaller one st- town than what i grew up yeah in. And like, we've got like 20 streets mm-hmm. total <laughs> there's like one street where there's all these shops and they go into this one shop on this one street in this tiny t- town in north carolina and is that where the fuck they were yeah, I could see North Carolina written underneath the oh, okay. one of the posters. So like, I it's had just no clue where they were. <laughs> I only know that from just this picture on the wall. But like, so there's one shop they go into that's like this mom and pop shop with like food the, and candy it's that's like, like homemade. Yeah, and like, like the local general store, like the sundry store. Like, and then it looked like a shop that like would be in like. In the town in, like, northern exposure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then, like, right behind them, it never leaves the frame whenever the camera's pointing in this side of the room. It's like they maneuver right to make them. sure it's there. It's like oh, it's yeah. like Jesus in, like, those paintings they have in churches. Like, they're like no matter where you're standing, he's looking at yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, like, this giant thing that they just wheeled in from, like, a quick and easy of Krispy Kreme donuts. Just giant sitting right there amongst stuff the store owner probably made themselves. It'd be like you go into, like... She's talking about, like, like, oh, we sell ice cream. I just made some strawberry this morning. Yeah! So she's back there churning her own ice cream, but she's ordering out, like, I I don't know how the fuck to make donuts, though. Just calling up Krispy Kreme. Like, could you deliver these to the middle of absolutely nowhere? Dude, it would be like if you go into, like, on Gilmore Girls, you go into Luke's Diner and he sells you a Big Mac. It'd be like like if you go to Smallville and there's just, like, a 7-Eleven in it. Yeah, uh-huh. There's a wild gunman machine. Right. Um, it was so... Ra- and not only that, or like, okay, well, so and, there's and this... She also mentions, like, it's like they walk in, and the first thing she says is, well, good afternoon. Mm-hmm. And this case is completely stocked, top to bottom. It is like, bright, there, too. There is not a single donut that has been taken or moved out of place. It's bigger like, than her desk. It's Yeah, it, it's... It's f- like this place looks like it's using a like, like, you know, like soft yellow, mm-hmm. like white lights on everything. But this goddamn Krispy Kreme display is like just full of like fluorescence. Like it is mm-hmm. just glowing in the background. Yeah. And I noticed everybody's like keeping well, to, like, like stand like on the corner of frame so you can see the goddamn Krispy Kremes behind them. Oh, and they didn't want you to forget about donuts either because later in the movie, in that the dinner was party... so fucking jarring! Yeah, during the dinner party, which is in this fancy dining room... Because we've only seen them like fixing up yeah. this huge like, like old-style gothic mansion mm-hmm. castle that they're living in. Like, it's the fucking house from uh, The Haunting. Yeah, Mm-hmm. It looks like the house from Morgan. I kind of wonder if it's the same house. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. As, as often as like they reuse some of those like it, this seriously places. looked the same. It seriously looked the same. So like, but, but yeah, they're, like it's they're, this fancy dinner. They, they've been and they've been fixing up the place like, yeah. like really like nice like decor like mix between like modern and traditional stuff all over the place like mm-hmm. like. Everything looks like it would belong in a house that looks like that. Mm-hmm. And then we go to the dinner scene in which they're eating in what we can only assume is the main dining room. Yeah. It's this big table. It's this fancy spread out. They got the fine china out and all that. They're all dressed up and everything. Their friends are over. They're eating these, like, you know, little game hens. And then behind the husband on the wall is this giant neon sign that's flashing eat donuts. Yeah, it's like hot fresh donuts or something. That would be like if in Batman, in like when Bruce Wayne is on the date with Vicki Vale, if right behind Bruce in the dining room was a big neon sign that said eat it Joe's. Like it was what the fuck is that? It dominates the frame whenever they're at that Mm -hmm. that dinner table. So it, it makes it even more awkward too because whenever like because this is the same room that she has her big monologue in so when it's her talking it's just a tight shot on her at the head of the table yeah being 
fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts to reaction shots at the far end of the table so you can catch all three of them. And all you can see is this giant fucking neon sign. And it never established that either of these characters are quirky enough to own that in their dining room. It's like, I don't know, what would look good in here? What about that giant, like, seven by seven foot neon flashing yeah. donut sign we own? Like, one or two lines of dialogue, or, or so, maybe even more than that, something to make me think, like, oh, they're the fun couple. They have, you know, yeah. stuff that, like... Me, you, or Dave would put in our house, you know. Yeah, like if I had a big donut sign, I you would bet your ass I'd hang I that would shit hang up. that up. Yeah, but yeah, it, it didn't feel right at all in this house with these people. None of it, mm -hmm. especially not for that scene. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as the scene went on, it started getting into kind of tighter shots on the husband, so it was less distracting. <laughs> but. What is yeah, that? Was the one of the most random pieces of set donuts. design that I've seen in a while? And the well, only it, thing I can think of is the movie still wants you to be thinking about donuts. Well, because I almost, I, and I almost even wonder. And, and follow me with with this. Okay, that Krispy Kreme shop that they opened up here in town. Yeah, they've got a like basically like a big like vacancy sign style thing on it if you ever look at the sign oh like if that's from if that sign is from a, a Krispy Kreme I, I almost wonder or at least to like like mimic that if nothing else because like whenever they like just get like a fresh batch up like they flip on that thing and mm -hmm. then it's like bang, like this big like like fresh donut sign mm -hmm. that comes on underneath the the main like Krispy Kreme sign yeah it's like I almost wonder if that's the same fucking sign Sort of like if, like, you you have product placement for Jimmy John's, and then an hour later there's a free smells sign in the background. Yeah. <laughs> no, I honestly that wouldn't surprise me because the only thing I could think of is seriously they they still want you to be thinking about hot fresh donuts. Because yeah, it, it's, and it's, I am. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, honestly, a donut sounds really good. It right actually now. does sound pretty tasty right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good it, job movie. It's it's. Just odd, but like one other thing, and, and I don't know why, I think it's because so many movies are so big on like hyping like phones and computers and stuff mm -hmm. that it's become one of those things that you notice really whenever you're watching movies like this. That generally, about any movie, unless there's a reason for somebody to have like, like a junk old phone, yeah, like either it's like a character trait or it's like, oh, they're on the run and they're like. This, like take it from some like old person is like mm -hmm. oh it's a flip phone or you know like oh it's a burner they're just like hey, meet me here trash can like everybody always has like brand new phones or phones that like are non-existent like in mm -hmm. the avengers movies yeah but like like when we saw uh when the bow breaks the other day everybody since it's put out by sony everybody was walking around with, like th like the new line of like xperia phones someone's calling me speaking of phone <laughs> But uh, everybody's For always Kate Beckinsale and Total Recall. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? It's like hand phone. <laughs> cheap movie, real hold, cheap. Hold on, let me put this up against the car so I can see you. There you God. are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they have but, one yeah, phone like, in this. Yeah, it's, it's like like you you're used to seeing like these new devices in all these movies or like yeah. like in the uh, like I think in Jason Bourne everybody's running around with like brand new iPhones. God, you could tell uh, in Jason Bourne. <laughs> It was hard to look, <laughs> but I'm assuming. <laughs> but like generally, like there's like one manufacturer, like like that fucking uh, sex tape movie. I remember you guys talking about that. that like there was one Apple scene commercial. that had every Apple product currently mm -hmm. on the market on one desk, yeah. and he was going to like, it's like, oh no, it's on my Mac. Let me look at my MacBook. Oh no, let me pull up my tablet. Oh no, let me pull up my iPhone. Oh no. Well, this had just like but, yeah, one scene, didn't there, it? There was only the... one scene with a phone, but it, it was just, it was odd to me because like, like, uh, he's watching like a video of like their, their dead kid on his yeah. phone. And I just happened to notice because it was like, it was a super, super small phone. I'm like, wait, wait, that's, that's like an older model iPhone. Yeah. So I, well, it just made me wonder, it was like, 
Was this movie made like two or three years ago? Has this been that sitting around somewhere? That wouldn't surprise me. There this was, seems like the kind of thing. And, that... and there, there was nothing else in it that could possibly date this movie. Like it, I, I don't know, unless you know the exact like mo- like year model of that like Porsche uh, SUV that they were driving. That phone is the only other thing, and that phone was a couple years old. And considering how like like. Like I said, like, generally in movies, unless there's a reason for someone to be using an older model phone, they're using brand new phones. Like I said, like, well, like that, I think like that phone that like Regina Hall was using in like When the Bow Breaks, I don't even know that that one is on the market yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't... It, it, the, Fucking like this, Xperia, it would, like fabric yeah. looking thing. It wouldn't surprise me if this was made a couple of years ago, but I mean, it could easily be one of those situations where it was like... The prop that they had just happened to maybe be a model that was a couple of years old. Like, <laughs> hey, we need a phone for this scene. Dude reaches in their pocket, like, oh, I haven't upgraded it in a couple <laughs> of years. Sorry. It's like, can we have this? I'll, 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 I'll fill you out a PO for it and just take it over to Sheila. And she'll she'll yeah, get yeah. you the 20 bucks for this phone. <laughs> I, I have trouble, like... Because like, that's basically what we did for, like, the... Uh, for like the snob movie, like, oh man, we got this scene, but we need to have a phone that has an antenna on it. It's like, oh, oh wait, I still have an, I still have a really old like LG that has an antenna. I still have an old Ameritech <laughs> sitting in one of the, but like those old phones we used in Hooker, uh, that we used in Hooker with a heart of gold. Like I still have a couple of those phones <laughs> laying around. Um, it would be, a, uh, this is a hard movie to say in what, because I I can't even sit here and be like. Oh, for curiosity's sake, you should watch this on Netflix or something because you're just gonna get bored. Yeah, it's 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 not gonna hold your attention. Mm-hmm. It's it's not good enough to justify saying watch it, but it's not bad enough to justify saying watch it for laughs. Yeah, exactly. It's like we we like we were riffing on it a lot while we were watching it, mm-hmm. but there were entire scenes where we were just having conversations about random other shit. Yeah. Uh huh. Because there, there's a lot of sequences where not much is going on and what is going on. Oh, the fake out dream sequence again. Cause the kid was all bloody. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for doing that for the 5,000th time I've seen this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I t- there were there were a few times where we were just like like where do we know that guy from like oh hold on let's pull up IMDb and just casually look through it oh it's Havoc from the X Men <laughs> like oh that explains it I thought it was the he's other in, guy he's in this um, so honestly I like, feel really bad if if that's the reason they killed him off and like like yeah X Men Apocalypse wasn't great. But I'd feel really bad if the reason they had to kill him off is because he was committed to doing this movie. Gotta do the disappointments room, man. I'm <laughs> a like, big uh, prison break fan. Alright, I guess we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll write you out of uh we'll write you out of the X-Men ones. You're you're good. Uh, it's like it, I just need to be around in case they need sequels for this. If you want yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to watch something Wentworth Miller wrote, watch Stoker. If you want to see something DJ Caruso directed, watch The Sultan Sea. Uh, this, you know, are if 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 you want to give it a shot, it maybe pop it up on Netflix. You'll at least have a pretty good scene with her drunk monologue. But other than that, there's worse horror movies this year that you'll have a funner time watching because they're so fucking inept this movie's just a whole lot of nothing yeah it's just it's it's and that that's like my my i mean it sounds redundant to say but it's my least favorite kind of bad movie oh yeah i, I know a, what you mean yeah. it's it's bad but not even in a special way mm-hmm. it's just bad it's yeah it was just a, a bad film that shouldn't have been in theaters oh god uh, like i mean yeah there was some decent cinematography but the, this movie shouldn't have I, been in theaters i think i think the only reason it landed a theater release as opposed to like like just dvd or video on demand mm-hmm. is just because of the names attached to it <laughs> most like, likely they sold it on the graces of who was involved like, they looked at it like, well, I mean, DJ Caruso's done some good stuff. We got Kate Beckinsale, like, you know, she's mm-hmm. got, like, the Underworld stuff coming back up. So, I mean, her name's trending. Like, sure, let's, and horror, let's throw it out there. Horror can be easy to turn a profit. 
you know, regardless of whether a movie's good or bad. <laughs> Although, from the sound of it, this movie's finding it hard to turn a profit. I, yeah, I don't think this debuted in the top ten. Unless you're this movie or Morgan. <laughs> Which, that one I thought was gonna at least do all right. I was surprised when it debuted at, like, frickin' Oogie Loves levels. Like, the movie wasn't good, but the movie... But, I've, I've seen like, worse movies that debuted at number one. But, yeah, I mean, considering how his... Like, the vibe for it was basically, like... Like... And granted, I haven't seen it yet, but from... Just just from, like, the... It's a, it's a solid rental. But just from, like, the selling point of the trailer basically makes it across like oh well yeah it's like like species meets splice meets, ex machina yeah like ex machina meets you know 11 from stranger things yeah yeah that's like, what it was and considering how that came out like right after stranger things had been out for like like a, like a month like like long enough for people to like have watched it all and fallen in love with the idea that it seemed like that would have done a lot better, but apparently no. No, no one was interested. I guess was, some people tried. Everybody was still at home rewatching Stranger Things. Uh, yeah, which yeah, I recommend that over going to see uh, Morgan in theaters. But Morgan was fine for a rental. Like it, it, I yeah, I heard some people saying afterwards, like, well, maybe it just didn't get advertised much. Are you kidding me? I saw a trailer for that like every fucking week for the past. The month before it came out. Yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, like, yeah. It's like... Maybe that's why it did fine in Springfield. It got previews here, but nowhere else. <laughs> like, I saw one trailer for The Disappointments Room, and that was maybe... A, 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 I saw something, none! Something we saw, like, like two or three weeks ago. I, did, I must have gone out to use the restroom, like... Either when, that or... It, no, you know what? I think it was... I think it was one of the movies I went to with Sarah. Oh, Ben-Hur? They sh did they show a preview for this in front of Ben or, or I, Mike and Dave? You guys were at that. I don't think it was that far back. Uh, and you guys were at... Uh, ben Hur was the most recent one I think you two were at. Uh, that would have been a <laughs> preview for this in front of Ben Hur. Yeah, fuck. I, can't, I cannot remember what movie it was. No, I saw... I never but, heard of this movie until it opened, like, two weeks ago. I thought it might be another one of the religious movies until I looked at the <laughs> synopsis. It's not like, if it's something I've never war, heard of... War Room 2. The, the Disappointments, disappointments room. room. Yeah, it's when you go pray in your war room and nothing happens. The end. It's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that God's Compass movie might as well be a sequel. It's got the same actors in it. Different characters, the same actors. Oh, in case you man. want to see the old War Room team get back together again. They got the band back together. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Alright. Tomorrow is... Uh, I need to look and see what that movie's about. Maybe it'll be great. Like, <laughs> um, tomorrow is uh, Storks and Magnificent Seven. I only know that because we mentioned it last night <laughs> in, the, in the videos last night. I'm like, yeah, so that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, Storks and Mag. I, I got. Actually, I'm looking forward to both of those movies. So <laughs> hopefully, I'll have an all right double feature tomorrow. <laughs> see it.